Alright you guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Today's video, I'm going to continue my journey into CFL. We're going to watch... We looked at the rules last time, and so I feel like I've got a pretty good grasp of the, grasp of the rules. I feel like, you know, most of them are, are pretty much the same as, uh, as American football. Although, I do want to see what it looks like when the whole of the offensive team, or the, the, the backs, the skill positions, are running around, you know, trying to put the defence off. I feel like the defence, as well, yeah, as well as that, they have to be a metre back or a yard back from the line of scrimmage. So, I feel like it's going to open up. I feel like there's going to be a lot of running plays. I feel like lateral passes may be involved a lot. But uh, we're about to see Sports Centre's top 10 crazy CFL moments. Let's do this. The quicker you're here, the faster you go. That's why where I come from, the only thing we know is... It's probably going to be copyrighted, but... Ah, oh, well. Are you kidding? This is unbelievable! Radically Canadian, they are the CFL's 10 most unbelievable moments. Illegal substitution, too many men on the field, Saskatchewan. They'll blow your mind, this should be good. smack you in the mouth, and knock you right off your feet. Ooh. Hey, oh my god, don't kick him. What are you doing? It's the 10 craziest moments in CFL history. It's next. <laughs> what the fuck? Get sent to jail for that. <coughs> Everybody and welcome to another Sports Center Top 10 special. I'm Darren Detition. We're glad that you tuned in. The focus of the show is the CFL, otherwise known as the Crazy Football League. When you have been around for over 100 years, things tend to happen. We start with number 10. And if you're going to showboat, then you had best be sure. from the officials in the end zone was stamp in your ball. He go, came down with the ball, and Kelly went down on the ground, pulled it away from him. Anytime it's a jump ball in, in, in the end zone, you know, it, it's, it's real offense gets possession, and I, I guess Kelly did not. I him. thought that was the ball. <laughs> this whole time I'm watching that, I thought that helmet that flew off was the ball. I was like, neither of them got it. What are you talking about? <laughs> of the rule that the offense gets possession. Malvo may sign this one. There you go. His dreadlocks were swagging off. Uh, he pulled field. a pen out of his business. He just uh, left San Francisco, and I guess him and T.O. were good buddies, so he decided to uh, mock what T.O. did. Oh, I was going to say, I've, um, I've seen that before. I thought I had, and it was Terrell Owens. That's right. Sign a ball. That was probably the silliest thing I've ever seen a player do. When you want to be gregarious in your celebration, you better make sure that the entire play is over. And then you copy somebody else's move that, that you can't do that in this league. I'm sure that moment even made Terrell Owens go, Oh man, that's not cool. Next thing you know, he's on the winning pick, so I got to tease him about that. A couple of guys who knew what happened, you know, they used to make catches on him and pull out a act like pull out a Sharpie and sign the ball in front of him in practice. Kelly, you know, he's a, he's a pretty good guy. He would just laugh it off and go back to the huddle or whatever. You bet. Okay, so I've got it now. They're talking about the defender. The defender thought he stole the ball. He signed it. But it was a touchdown. Is that right? Mill Stegall saved Kelly Malvo. He thought he was big business, but he had just uh, left San Francisco. Kelly went down on the ground, pulled it away from him. Anytime it's a jump ball in, in, in the end zone, you know, it, it's real offense gets possession. And I, I guess Kelly did not have an understanding of the rule that the offense gets possession. Malvo may sign. I guess Kelly in, a, in the end zone, you know, it, it, it's real offense gets possession. And I, I guess Kelly did not have an understanding of the rule that the offense gets possession. Malvo may sign this one. There you go. His dreadlocks were swagging all over the place. He thought he was big business. And he had just 
uh, left San Francisco, and I guess him and T.O. were good buddies, so he decided to uh, mark what T.O. did, sign the ball. That was probably the silliest thing I've ever seen a player do. When you want to be gregarious in your celebration, you better make sure that the Makes sense now. play is over. And then you copy somebody else's move that, that you can't do that in this league. I'm sure that moment even made Terrell Owens go, Ooh, man, that's not cool. <laughs> Next thing you know, he's over the winning pick, so I got 27 to too, that's my lucky number. I knew what happened, you know, they used to make catches on him and pull out a, have like pull out a Sharpie and sign the ball in front of him in practice. And Kelly, you know, he's, he's a pretty good. All time leader in touchdown, Milt Stegall. Milt Stegall. Not Steven Stegall, Milt. Seagull, old Milty. I'm gonna have to look him up. Fifteen thousand receiving yards. The guy, he would just laugh it off and go back to the huddle or whatever. You better throw away the sharpie. Milt Steagle saving Kelly Bellville right now. Sign this, baby. <laughs> I'm guessing. This is Wendy's kick for a million. Paul Deesburg from Bell River, Ontario, where it's pretty simple. One kick, one million dollars. Okay, this is twenty. Nick Manut. Trying to scare his way and I finally said, you know, you're missing it only by this much to the right. He said, I know, I said, okay. So I backed off and the rest is history. So, you kick it from the 20, if you miss, you go back to the 30, if you miss, you go back to the 40. And he got it from 50, that's a fucking nice kick. It's kind of like putting myself down for the first three and I didn't even know what to do. Next time I'm like, we should go out there and kick it like we learned it and put it through like it quick and sweet. I don't know, this is awesome! Woo! In all my years at TSN, it was one of the more amazing moments <laughs> It didn't look like he had much power either. From the first couple of kicks looked alright, but that last one didn't look like he had much. But I don't know if he'd ever. I think it was the camera angle. Heard the Canadian national anthem, even though it's in the United States. This is still the Canadian Football League. This had to be the most embarrassing moment in all of CFL expansion. With growing hearts, we see the rise. The true and strong and free. Not like it's in front of 50,000 people, thank God. But, you know, it was only in front of 5,000, but you know, that were there at, uh, in Las Vegas watching the game. Ah, oh, yes, uh, our national anthem sung to Old Christmas Tree. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. That's embarrassing. That um, was a low moment for the league and, uh, and really highlighted the, the dangers of bringing in a U.S. team into a tradition. And I remember the slack that our team got for it. It was very embarrassing. Worthy. to make up for it and they welcomed him back to a Canadian stadium and uh, he did get a chance to make amends and sing a talk about You know that saying, whatever happens in Vegas can stay in Vegas? That should definitely stay in Vegas. Four seconds left and Pachocha's team about to steal. Once again, I don't get that. Is it? <laughs> Fuck. Ah yes, uh, our national anthem sung to old Christmas tree. From Fox. Old Christmas tree. The fuck is old Christmas tree? You know, it was only for the five thou. Most embarrassing. Old Christmas tree, old Christmas tree. Is that it? Moment in all of CFL expansion. Still the ever heard. Dennis Parker. One of the more amazing moments I've ever been on. Hang on, just just bear with Dennis me. Dennis Park was the Las Vegas Lounge singer. I don't know if he'd ever heard the Canadian national anthem. 
Even though it's in the United States, this is still the Canadian Football League. This had to be the most embarrassing moment in all of CFL expansion. With growing hearts we see thee rise, the true and strong and free. Not like he's in front of 50,000 people. I, obviously, I, I don't know. I don't know I understand. He wanted a chance to make up and make a man. That could definitely stay in Vegas. Four seconds. He sung the song to, to a different tune? Hang on. Anthem. Uh, butchered it. <laughs> oh, Canada in Las Vegas. Yeah, what, what, what? What is it? Las Vegas Poss. We're a Canadian football team. <laughs> Let me see what happened. I need to know what fucking happened. Okay. There were several inf infamous moments. At the team's first home game, the singer of the national anthems, Dennis Casey Parks, singing under the pseudonym Greg Bartholomew, had only a vague knowledge of the Canadian anthem O Canada, and when he sang it, the song sounded similar to O Christmas Tree. <laughs> Two weeks later, he was brought brought to a game. See, I don't know why. That's I don't know the words to the set, to the Canadian national anthem, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. <laughs> but if he started singing the national anthem to a completely different tune and like put random words in there, uh, that would be <laughs> that would be absolutely hilarious. So well done, mate. Here we go. Four seconds left in the church's team. About to steal one. The game is over. You know, defensively, we just got up the touchdown for Edmonton to go ahead. And there's seconds left in the game. We're like, you know, we're all despondent on the sideline thinking we just lost the game for our team. Pretty much everybody thought it was over. It's hard to be optimistic when you're in that situation. I'm an optimistic person. One last shot. Downfield for Stiegel. Oh! That was a, a mix-up by the defense. I actually thought I was dreaming. When you're playing, you know, little kids is in the yard growing up, you always, uh, you always dream of throwing the last second touchdown. The most remarkable touchdown of Bill Stiegel's career. What was that defender doing? That cornerback should have been... Four seconds left on the 10-yard line. Need a touchdown. That's a little bit. They would play that type of defense. I've never seen my coaches jump in such jubilation and move up and down the sidelines so fast before. I think that was more shocking than anything was watching Coach Barry's reaction as he tore his headset off and tried to trot along behind Bill Stegall. I love that kind of thing. We have that's what makes the game. Like I always say, I think that's the greatest play, not only in CFL history, but in history. Coming up, you've never seen fan access like this before. I just reached over and Grab the ball out of his arm. Our countdown of the CFL's craziest moments continues with the top six next. Oh, fuck! Oh, oh no! Welcome back to the show, and could you imagine a great cup game running out of footballs? Well, it actually happened in 1956. Maybe footballs were like gold. A fool's goal because one fool stole the ball. I've been to a couple of Grey Cups, and you know what? I can see it happening. Hi, my name is Rocky This Smile, and I'm here at Speaker's Corner for the first time ever in my life. The reason I'm here is because today, Sunday, the 11th of September, we had a game today against the Calgary Stampeders. During the course of the games, emotions ran high and wild and whatever, whatever, and a fight broke out on the sideline. And there's pushing and shoving. I got involved and did some pretty bad things. Far out! The reason I did those things was stupid. I just want to apologize to the player from Calgary because I'm generally not the type of person to go off the edge and resorts to physical violence. What a 
crazy cunt. So is McVay. Until next time, peace and love. Again, I apologize. Thanks a lot. I'd have to know him personally to make a call on that. The winner of this game goes on to the 1972 Great Cup. It's tied 24-24. It comes down to the last play of the game. Jack Abichan tries a 32-yard field goal to win it. I'm just going to kill the ball, kick it out of the end zone. We get a single point through, and we go to the Great Cup. It goes wide. But oh no, I couldn't believe I did that. Oh. Winnipeg doesn't get out of the end zone. It's a single point. Saskatchewan wins anyway. I've never seen anybody kick <laughs> out of the end zone. It's like rugby. Long line master caught the ball. He punted it left footed back <laughs> into the end zone. Winnipeg kicks it out again. No way! <laughs> I think it was like a no yards penalty. There was a holding penalty. I got a chance to kick it again. So I just relaxed and kicked it and you know, through the uprights out of the end zone. Oh my god. Goes off to the great I really can't think of any any plays that are any any crazy than that one. No. Not even close. It's like you gave a rugby back and forth between the two fullbacks. 44 27 to count. Edmonton over Montreal. Time remaining about 2 minutes and 50 seconds. Parker running wide. Trying to get away. Why are he done? He's over. He was looking back at the quarterback, and I just reached over and grabbed the ball out of his arm. And I think he was a little startled, but um, I don't think he um, cared. Ball's gone. <laughs> that, 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 that Ball's gone. Like the right thing to do. And oh, he got it. it. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> but I just did it. The ball game is not over yet. <laughs> he had to wrestle with him. The fact that we don't have a football for the conversion. It was lost somewhere over on the side of the field. I put it up under my coat, turned around slowly, and just walked out through the crowd, and I was on to Blue Street. All I remember in watching that, that film. That's amazing. The stadium announcement was, I believe, at Varsity Stadium. Saying it's sounding in classic 1950-ish announcer voice. If someone happens to have a ball, if they could bring it down to the field, please. Or something like that. But like, it's bizarre. That is just totally bizarre. Well, we may get going here. They had they no football. If somebody happens to have a fair football, or they might put a helmet down and try booting that over. <laughs> Somewhere along the line they have lost total then of 18 pieces of pigskin. At least they had a at least they had a sense of humor back in the day. During a championship game? That's what makes CFL history what it is. It's glorious. The ball game is over, ladies and gentlemen. The officials have decided to let the conversion go. Edmonton beat Montreal 51 to 27. Straight ahead, it wouldn't truly be Canadian without some wild weather. It's ridiculous to, to think when you watch the film of that. I've seen, of I've seen some of these snow games that you guys have. Brave the elements. The top but three is next. The only thing similar to that, I've never seen any rugby game play, played in snow. I've seen a rugby game played in real thick fog, like I just saw there. And like you literally can't see the ball. You pass it. <laughs> you can't see five meters in front of you. So I don't know how you meant to play.